Malaysia reported a rise of domestic violence cases during the year and a half long COVID-19 lockdowns. But Malaysia is not alone in this. Other countries reported similar spikes. While the pandemic has brought this issue into the spotlight, domestic violence is obviously not a new story. So the real question is, what have we been doing about it? Domestic violence is a pattern of violence, abuse or intimidation used to control or maintain power over a partner. So fundamentally, domestic violence is really about power and control, which is why there's a need for the legal system to be mindful of how this can manifest in a relationship. I think the law is comprehensive enough, but the problem is when it comes to execution. Domestic Violence Act 1994 under Section 2, it's already given a very wide definition on what is actually domestic violence. One of it is physical abuse. Other than that, if you cause fear, to your family member or to your spouse. Or the third one, maybe you swindle their money, you cause damages to their property. Other than that, if let's say you humiliate them or defame them in uh, social media, all of it is actually fall under the definition of domestic violence. But if this kind of case, a victim come and they say that I suffer a psychological abuse most of the time, this kind of cases, the officer who take the report is not going to proceed with this. So clearly, there needs to be drastic improvements at tackling domestic violence. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But let's take a step back and look at why domestic violence happens in the first place. There are many risk factors or conditions that make domestic violence more likely to occur. These factors exist on an individual, relationship, community, and even societal level. A relationship risk factor, for example, could be when there's an imbalance of power in the relationship or if a couple is struggling with their finances. On a community level, poverty or overcrowded housing are risk factors. And finally, at the societal level, having a culture of strict gender roles could also lead to higher rates of domestic violence. And domestic violence can have long-term harmful impact on not just the individual, but society at large. Needless to say, this affects the social economy of the country as a whole. This IMF paper highlights that the physical, psychological and emotional violence that women experience make it more difficult for them to achieve or maintain a job. This 2009 study in Australia estimated that domestic violence cost the country 13.6 billion Aussie dollars a year, equivalent to 56 billion dollar ringgit in today's terms. And that was in an Aussie population of 21 million at that time. Malaysia's population today is more than 50% higher. The study broke down the different costs into these seven categories. Production-related costs are when victims of domestic violence have to take time off work and the impact that has on employers. Administrative costs are public funds spent on police work, court hearings, counselling, imprisonment, and so on. But perhaps the most interesting is what the study calls second-generation costs. Children who witness or experience domestic violence are more likely to be involved in crime. There is a domino effect with domestic violence. What starts at home ends up affecting the whole nation. Family is a very uh, small unit, but then it makes up to the larger in society. The children, when they grow up, they're going to be parents as well. When they are being the, the new parents or they're being just a new um, partner, they're going to imitate the, the parents' way. Some of them are really feel that that's the only way. They will say that, um, I think because uh, my mom is nagging a lot, that's why my father did that. So I think they, they normalize that, that it's okay for the father to do that. Domestic violence is more regarded as like, you know, family matters. We don't, we don't talk uh, domestic violence like we talk about drugs, about robbery or anything like that. Hopefully that people will see in the future, uh, domestic violence is the, as dangerous as any other uh, crime in Malaysia. Solving domestic violence requires generations of long-term systemic changes. But there are things that we can do right now to give domestic violence victims more power. To tell you honestly, from my opinion, when I refer to the situation like 
one of uh, the victim come to the police station. They try to explain, but nobody listened to her. So the first thing is that for you to give all the officer in each and every police station to have one department for this for domestic violence because the case keep on increasing and each of officer who handle with this they are very sufficient knowledgeable and know how to take the report and then what are the next step to take we have cases yeah in malaysia that wife killed by the husband this kind of cases doesn't occur in one day there will be a series of number before this kind of act happen regarding this number two the officer who handle this matter must be really really experienced and knowledgeable and number 3 as a community we need to increase uh, awareness sometimes a woman try to say that the husband is very harsh or abusive some of the family member will say he is your husband just listen to him you are a woman no thing like that so if you ask me how to change this thing keep on sharing even with one individual keep on sharing this thought keep on sharing the awareness keep on sharing about their right the woman right children right and that's the final piece of the puzzle you there's no doubt that the legal system needs to change but changing cultural practices that is on all of us